Greetings in the name of Christ. My name is Walter Meyer III. We will be reviewing the New Testament reading for the fifth Sunday of Easter. This is Acts chapter 8, verses 26 to 40. We will go through the Greek text, and then I'll have a few thoughts after that. So, starting with verse 26, I'm not going to analyze every word, but just selected words. And the angel of the Lord, and then Elalesen, spoke to Philip, Legon, saying, Arise and go. And so there are two imperatives there, from anistemi and from poor you, O oh my. Arise and go. Now this next phrase, kata mezaim brian. This receives different translations. According to one translation, it would be about noon or about midday or at midday. According to another translation, it is south or southward. So that will be your choice. Continuing, epi to tain hodon, to the road, and then the one going down. That's from the verb katabino, the one going down from Jerusalem to Gaza. And then finally, aute, it, estin, is literally erimos, desert. You could translate that, it is a desert place. Verse 27, and arising, he went, kai idu, and behold, a man, an Ethiopian, a eunuch, and now this next word, dunastes. This receives various translations as well. One could be treasurer. Other translations are important official or court official. This man was a very high official. So a court official or the treasurer of Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians. He was over all, and now we have this word Gaza, the genitive, over all her treasury. And now continuing, he, and then Eleuthe, had come. That is from Erchomai, of course. This is the pluperfect. He had come. And then we have this participle. It's a future participle. Worshipping. And the participle is used here to express purpose. To worship at Jerusalem. Verse 28. And he was, and then hupostrepho, returning, and then the verb kathemi, sitting, in the armatus, harmatus. Now, this also receives various translations. The noun is harma. This could be translated as wagon. Uh, many translations have it as chariot. So, and he was sitting in his wagon or chariot. And now this is a very important verb in this pericope. The verb is anagenosko, anagenosko. And this means to read. The form here is an imperfect, which pictures then the continual action, the continual reading. He was reading the prophet Isaiah, 29. And the spirit said to Philip, and then we have this, prosercomai, we have the aorist imperative, go to, uh, go up, and, and then we have the verb, kolaomai, this is an aorist passive imperative, be joined to this wagon. So, go up to and be joined to this wagon. All right, please raise the text. Verse 30, with this verb, the first verb of verse 30, we have the root prostrecho, prostrecho. 
Uh, this is an heiress participle, run to. And Philip, running to it, heard him, and then again that verb, reading Isaiah the prophet, and he said. And then we have this combination of ara, ge. And ara is an interrogative particle. It's an intensive used to indicate a question and also this, doubt on Philip's part. So an intensive combination here also with ge. And ge as well is an emphatic particle. So this was really a question on Philip's part, also expressing some doubt on his part. Do you know, but in this context better, do you understand what you are reading, what you are reading, what you read? On a gnosko again. Verse 31. And he said, but how am I able if there is no one, and then we have this verb here, Hode geo, hode geo, and this is now a future, which means to show the way, to lead. If there is no one to lead me, who will lead me? If there is no one who will lead me or show me the way. And then the verb parakalao, which means to invite. And he invited Philip coming up to sit with him, or to sit down with him. So on a bino there, the participle, and kathitso, the aorist infinitive. Verse 32. And the perioche, and that means portion, and the portion of the scripture which he read, which he was reading, and so again, on a gnosko, Ain was this. And now the quotation from the Old Testament. As a sheep to the slaughter, and then we have this verb, ago. And this is the aorist passive, he was led. And as a lamb before, it's, and then we have this, the verb, kero which means to shear. And this is a present participle. Before its shearer is aphonus, without voice, is silent. Thus or so, he did not open his mouth. Okay, please raise the screen. Verse 33. In his... I'll add that, auto, humiliation, tapenosis, which means humiliation. In his humiliation, his crisis, judgment or just judgment, uh, his justice. And then we have the verb iro, and this is the aorist passive, which means then to be lifted up, to be taken away. So in his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And then going on, Tain Geneon Auto, his generation who, and then we have the verb, diageomai. And this is a future middle to relate, to narrate. And who can speak about his generation? And then Hoti, because. And then again, the verb, iro, and then this passive, he was lifted up, or he was taken away from the earth. And then an actual subject is, he zoe, and then auto, because his life was taken up from the earth. All right, that's the end of the quotation. And then verse 34, and answering, the eunuch said, to Philip, I ask, so deomai, I ask you concerning whom does the prophet speak this? Concerning himself or concerning someone else? Verse 35. And then we have the verb 
anoigo, which means to open. And Philip opening his mouth and beginning, so archomai, this is the aorist participle, and beginning from this scripture, and then we have this well-known verb here for to evangelize, to preach the good news, to preach the gospel. Preach the good news to him of Jesus. Verse 36. And as they went, poor you, oh my, and as they went down the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, so Femi, we have the third singular here, behold, water, or here is water. What, and then we have the verb koluo, which means hinder, prevent, forbid. What hinders me, what prevents me to be baptized, to be baptized? 38. And then we have the verb keluo, command. And he commanded, now literally, this is from this next verb, stay nigh. Uh, this is the aorist infinitive, to stand. Uh, we would put, though, the translation in this context, he commanded the wagon or the chariot to stop, to stop. And kadepesan, they went down um, Photoroi, both to the water, and Philip, I'm sorry, both Philip and the eunuch, and then the verb batitso, and he baptized him. So again, to repeat that, and they went down both to the water, uh, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. All right, please raise the screen. We come to the last two verses, verses 39 and 40. And when they came up from the water, the Spirit of the Lord, and then we have this verb, harpazo. This is an aorist, which means to snatch, to carry off. The Spirit of the Lord carried off Philip, and he did not see him any longer, the eunuch. So putting that in a little bit smoother English, and the eunuch did not see him any longer. For he went, or you could say here, but he went his way, chiron, rejoicing. So the eunuch then proceeded on his trip homeward, but he was rejoicing. And then finally, verse 40, <clears throat> and Philip was found. So here we have the verb horisco, and this is an aorist passive, was found at Azotus. And going through or passing through, and then that verb again about the good news, proclaiming the good news, he evangelized all the cities, heos, until he came to Caesarea. All right. So thus far with the Greek text. Now just a few thoughts with regard to this. I preached on this text in the chapel of Concordia Theological Seminary uh, back in 2008. And I brought out four points from this text. First point was this. Um, the Holy Spirit called Philip and told him to go to this desert place. And so he was asked, Philip was asked to leave a tremendous mission field in Samaria, north of Jerusalem, and to go to this desert place. And Philip, no doubt, asked himself, why? Why there? But God knew why. And so we simply follow God's directions. And God puts us where he wants us to work. Now, another observation would be this. Um, we will minister to whomever God puts in our lives, for God wants all to be saved. And that certainly is a message from this pericope, and Philip then evangelizing this man from 
Ethiopia, this eunuch from Ethiopia. Now, the third point would be this. Philip then preached to this Ethiopian the good news about Jesus Christ. And that is, of course, our message, preaching Christ and him crucified. We notice that the text which Philip used, which was his starting point, and from which then he proceeded, was this powerful gospel passage from Isaiah, the fourth servant song. And this is from Isaiah chapter 53, well known to all of us. And so, first of all, this reminds us that that fourth servant song is indeed a messianic prophecy. And it brings out powerfully the suffering that the Messiah went through in order to pay for the sins of the world and that his suffering was indeed substitutionary, but he indeed carried through with his work successfully. And so, in that passage and in other passages of the Old Testament, the truth about Christ and the chief doctrine, justification by God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And we can also tell from our pericope that Philip, in teaching this man from the Old Testament, also told him about the sacraments, and the sacraments then instituted by Christ. There were sacraments in the Old Testament era, circumcision and the sacrifices, and then Philip must have gone on to, indeed to speak to him about the New Testament sacraments, baptism, and then also the Lord's Supper. And so when they come to water, very clear from our text, the eunuch is eager to be baptized. And then the fourth point would be this. Um, we are merely God's instruments to proclaim his word, to get his word out to others, and to administer the sacraments. God uses us, and God is the one who gives the results. God is the one, of course, who brings to faith and preserves in the faith. But what a wonderful way to be used by the Lord to bring others to faith. May God bless your meditation on this text. It's a neat text to work with, a great missionary text. May God bless your efforts on this text and in your work in his church. The Lord be with you.